Got our RAM installed, our AIO right here, M.2 slot that we're using. Hey everyone, Digital David here. Today in this video, I'm gonna be checking out the MSI. This is the Mag B760 Tomahawk Wi-Fi DDR4 motherboard. MSI did send me this product to check out today, but any opinion expressed in this video is strictly my own. That being said, if you're interested in this product or you wanna find out more about this motherboard, the link to it will be in the video description. Take a look at the retail box. And packaging right here looks really nice. A lot of tech specs and key features on the back side for you. So this works with Windows 11. This has LGA 1700 for its socket that supports Intel 12th and 13th gen CPUs. We also have Lightning Gen 5 support that is compatible with PCIe 4.0 devices. Can't forget about Wi-Fi 6E, Bluetooth 5.2, and we also have 2.5 gig LAN for you hardwired people out there. Now let's open it up and look at the contents. Here are all the contents. First up, we have our product literature featuring our regulatory information and a quick start guide complete with QR codes for warranty information, tutorial videos to help you get everything set up and installed. We also have some nice stickers and labels right here for your cables and to just deck out your new PC and motherboard. Next, we have an angled 90 degree data cable right here. If you wanna use any 2.5 inch drives or 3.5 inch drives. We also have two antennas for the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth on this board. One M2 locker right here. And lastly, we have the board itself. Let's look at this in more detail. Here's the board up close. Check it out, everything looks great. Front and center, we have our LGA 1700 socket here for Intel 12th and 13th gen CPUs. We have our four RAM slots there with a nice option letting us know which two to use first. You're gonna use the DIMM A2 and DIMM B2 slots first. That's gonna be those two guys right there if you're gonna do two sticks of RAM. Also, I really like how everything's labeled here. So we have three M.2 slots. I know that without even having to remove the covers. Here's our PCIe slots right there. We got three of those. Tomahawk's logo and branding, MSI's logo and branding. We got the mag up at the top. Take a look at all of our different headers, connection options. So we have our USB Type-C here, USB 3.0, one of each as I'm seeing. Here's our two CPU power connectors up at the top. Good looking board. Bunch of additional connectors down below. Got two USB right here. Plenty of RGB connection options, fan connections. Let's flip it over to the back side. Looks really nice. We have a couple of case standoff keep out zones labeled accordingly for us. And then let's look at our IO options right here. A lot of USB ports, USB type C, 2.5 gig LAN, HDMI and display port. Got our Wi-Fi and Bluetooth antennas here. All of our different audio options on the board. Now let's go ahead, let's take the covers off. All right, so we got the covers removed. Let's take a look at the covers first. You'll notice on the back side, we got to remove that sticker before installation. Same for two and three drive bays there. Look at all of our M.2 slots. The first one, plenty of room depending on the size of drive and you can remove and reconfigure those as needed. Same with our second and third slots right there. Everything looks great. We got our PC built with the motherboard installed. So let's look at it up close. So let's start in the top left hand corner of the motherboard. You'll notice we have our two CPU power connectors right there. Then moving right along, we have some fan connectors, RGB, fan again. Then we have our main power cable, USB 3.0, USB type C. Got our RAM installed, our AIO right here. M.2 slot that we're using, our beautiful MSI RTX 3070 Ti with our power connectors right there and the cables being routed out the bottom. You'll notice in the very corner, we've got our front panel connector. Then we have USB for our RGB hub. And then in this corner, we have our HD audio. Check it out. And if you wanted to see the backside in action right here, looks really nice with its integrated cover. Flush mount with our case. 
Now with our PC built, let's look at the BIO settings. So go ahead, power on your machine, hold down the delete key on your keyboard. That should take you into the BIOS that you see right here. We have our BIOS updated to the most recent version at the time of this video. There's the specific build, if you're wondering. So this is the main screen in easy mode, giving us some quick tech specs here up at the top. We have a couple different settings, our XMP profile options, boot priority. We're not gonna go over each individual setting and feature. I just wanna show you the layout and every additional option that you have to click on. So within easy mode, we're looking at our CPU section right here, followed by our memory. Then we have our storage, fan info, and a hotkey help section. We also have M flash, favorites, hardware monitor. So let's choose hardware monitor. Pick what you wanna see. You can select the different options here. Our pump, you get the idea. About and help up at the top and this little X to go back. We have our CPU fan fail, warning control, ERP ready, HD audio controller. Some of these we can just toggle on or off. RAID, easy LED control. But if you still want more options and features, go up to the top here where it says advanced or F7. And now you notice it looks very similar, but we have different options arranged for us with the mag logo and branding. So here's our motherboard settings all laid out, each individual item. So we have our system status here. Then we have our advanced settings. You'll spend a lot of time here if you want to tweak your motherboard. PCIe settings, ACPI settings, integrated options. We have a couple different options here. Thunderbolt. Then we have our USB config. Power management setup. And you'll notice some of these as you hover across them, it'll give you a nice little tidbit of help info off to the right hand side. Helping you understand some of the settings if you're unfamiliar. Wake up event setup. Secure race plus. MSI driver, utility installer. So let's go back. And then we have our OC settings. If you want to do any overclocking, we have two different options. Normal. You could adjust just about everything you want here. And then we can go to expert. That'll give us some additional options to tweak. So pick and choose if you want to tackle that. M flash again, OC profile, so we can save multiple profiles here or load them. Here's the hardware monitor again, and then we have beta runner if you want to give that a try. That's another option for you within the advanced mode. Say that's too much for you, you want to go back, just hit F7 again or toggle up to that tab, and now you're back in easy mode. So that's a quick look at MSI's bio settings. You have so many different options that you can configure and go over within the BIOS for this motherboard. The motherboard software doesn't just end with the BIOS settings. We also have MSI Center that you can download. This gives us hardware monitoring, advanced features with other software we can pick and choose, and support for your motherboard like easy driver and BIOS updates. So first up, we have MSI Center open right here and we're in the hardware monitoring section. So we have our CPU frequency, GPU core clock, and some temps, as well as different fan RPM settings here, different voltages, easily displayed in this nice chart and diagram system for us. So that's our hardware monitoring. Then we have our feature section. This is where any additional software or programs you want to download within MSI Center will show up. So in our case, we downloaded Mystic Light, and Mystic Light's great to control the RGB on your motherboard, your RAM, your AIO, things like that. It'll show up right here. And what's cool about the motherboard in particular is you can actually select individual headers on the board to control, or you can control everything all at once right there. But there's a nice breakdown for you. And then you have your light speed, brightness, things like that. So you get the idea. RAM, pick and choose. You can link everything together. Control it all right there. 
different profiles, game sync, ambient link. So there's a lot of options. Additional mystic light settings there. Next up, we have our support section. This is great if you want to update everything, especially if you just built your PC. I highly recommend going to live update. And then you can scan to see the latest drivers available for your board and for some third party utilities. So in this case, we can still update our driver for our PCIe network drivers. And we have some Intel Extreme Tuning, Norton 360, which I don't want. So I always download these up to you on the third parties. There's also the advanced section. This is how I was able to download the BIOS so easily. Just hit yes, and if there's any BIOS updates, things like that, we had an LED controller firmware update as well. That was all conducted right from this screen. It's gonna take a minute, but no updates are found. So if they are, that's how you're gonna do that. So I really like the update process. It's super simple. Just keep in mind, you have two different options. Basically your basic updates, and then your advanced updates if you want to do any of that. And I highly recommend if nothing's broke, don't fix it. But if you ever do want to update your BIOS, the best time would be when you're setting everything up versus later on once it's all set up. And if something happened, the pain in that verse initially. So if you do want to update it for whatever reason, I highly recommend doing it right when you build your PC. But if it's not broke, don't worry about fixing it either. And then we have a couple different icons up in the corner. So here's our feature sets. That's the one we installed. This is how we found Mystic Light. But you'll notice we have additional items here and we can install them all if we want. Usage scenario, settings and history. Then we have our settings right there for our program for MSI Center. And then we have our own log and information if you wanted to create and register your device your own profile, you can do that right here all within MSI Center. So let me share with you my final thoughts in regards to the MSI Mag B760 Tomahawk Wi-Fi DDR4 motherboard. I really like this motherboard. Yes, it's full of some compromises like not having DDR5, but I think that's geared towards a particular market segment where somebody wants Intel 12th and 13th gen CPUs, but you don't want all of the latest and greatest features, especially when on paper they make a difference, but in the real world use case and scenarios for most people, you're not gonna notice. I think DDR4 to DDR5 is a fantastic example for 90% or whatever of the users out there. So with this particular board, I like what we get. We get Gen 5 for one of the X16 PCIe slots on this board. So in the future, when GPUs will support that, I don't know if that's next gen or next next gen, this board will have some of that future proofing and it won't be outdated. Now, along that line though, I do wish we had Gen 5 speeds for an M.2 slot. When those start coming to the market, I could see people wanting to get those faster read and write speeds and you won't be able to get that on this particular board. The good news is Gen 4 speeds are so fast that again, for most people, they'd rather save money now, spend it elsewhere, and still get some of the latest and greatest features. So this board is feature rich, tons of M.2 slots. So in the future, maybe you want to take your PC, you're gonna upgrade everything, but you wanna keep this as maybe like a home server, things like that. You'll have some great solid state options to still have a really fast and high performing server, things like that for years to come. Maybe just a network attached storage, you get the idea. Other than that, the USB ports on this are great. There's a lot of them, but they're not super fast. Majority, about half of them are gonna be your regular USB 2.0 ports. So I'd like to see a couple more of those replaced to 3.0 and beyond. But again, there are compromises. So it really comes down to what do you need? Is it good enough? And I think for most people, the answer is yes. And two more quick things I wanna mention for you guys here. There's no onboard RGB or LED lights for this particular board. I've been spoiled by some of the higher end MSI models with their Dragon Illuminated, things like that. I think that's a really nice touch. But again, you gotta pay more for that feature. And lastly, I think the aesthetic on this board looks fantastic for the price. They did a really nice job and it's a good looking board. If you want to showcase it in your PC build, you don't have to worry about hiding it out of the way or things like that. You'll want to look at it because it looks really nice.